Good morning, everybody. Oh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Let's in, let me invite you to um, greet one another in our in our holy uh, Zoom greeting uh, to share a, a a gesture of kindness and welcome to one another. Oh, Christy's going to come in too. Good, good, good. Brady Bunch waves, we call them. Um, I'm glad we can be together. Thank you, Robin, for our preludes. Um, just a few announcements before we begin. Begin, of course, um, if you have a celebration or a birthday that you that you'd like for us to share in together please chat that in pretty soon um, I want to let you know that Melissa Veith and Lewis Bishop were married yesterday over at the Tidal Falls Preserve in Hancock it's a beautiful beautiful spot and in addition to celebrating their their wedding I'm very pleased to report that um, whatever the renovations they've done in the last few years over there has greatly reduced the mosquito population so if you've never been to the Tidal Falls uh, right there in Hancock, it's really, really a beautiful spot. And while we were there, the, the, fall, the water was rushing out from, um, from north to south, and the tide just switched the equilibrium enough that in, within a matter of minutes, it started rushing the other way. I thought there would be this long detente. Um, and as it turns out, it actually kind of turns on a dime. It was really cool to see, so I recommend it to you. Um, other birthdays, um, Alex Ruse has a birthday tomorrow. I think he's turning 12. Um, Jeff Hobbs, Avery, and Cal Breyer have uh, birthdays on Wednesday. And MJ Shepherds has a birthday on Thursday. Julia Hendricks and Dave Woodside have birthdays on Friday. So happy birthday to you guys coming up. Um, Jill says happy birthday to our daughter, Jen. So happy birthday to, I hope that might be today, Jill, or later on this week, but happy birthday as well. Um, if you have anything that you'd like to, to share with us, um, you can use our chat box to include that, or you can text to my cell phone, which is 207-266-9026, or to Christie's, um, 669-0232. Um, gather your elements together, um, something to drink and something to eat. It's Communion Sunday again. If you'd like to participate as a liturgist or a greeter or any other way in our upcoming services, let me know. Open tables are on Tuesday afternoon by takeout or delivery. Um, there's Tuesday morning prayer at 8.30 and Thursday evening prayer at 7 o'clock by Facebook Live. Um, Thursday morning, we gather at the church at 10 o'clock for a saunter about town. Um, I think the rain will be passed by then. So it's a great and leisurely time. And I can tell you every time we discover something really cool. Um, a couple weeks ago, it was dewy that morning. So we saw this intricate network of webs uh, spider webs out over where Martha and Dawn live over there on um, right along the uh, the walk there the the shore path and um, let me think this week we saw a cardinal a beautiful beautiful cardinal in a bush so there's a lot of fun things to notice when you're not rushing from place to place and I hope you'll consider joining us um, Bible study on Friday by way of zoom plus you can be here in person safely and we'll also do by zoom and remember, we're still receiving Remembrance Rocks on the front steps of the church. Big announcement. Uh, maybe you saw this already. Next Sunday, August 9th, we're going to have another in-person outdoor worship service at the Bar Harbor, Bar Harbor Historical Society Building, 127 West Street. Um, so, And I understand the governor has raised the, the, number, the maximum number of uh, people. So as long as we're under 100, that will be fine, and certainly it's a space large enough to accommodate it. Um, we think if, if you're not receiving our weekly messenger, just let me know if there's anything else we can do to close some loops. Let me know. Um, last thing I'll remind you about is today is one of the days, one of the evenings that they'll offer the, um, the Christian Ministries in the National Park Worship Service. It's about half an hour before sunset, so maybe 7.30 or so you'd want to be up to the Blue Hill Overlook up there on Cadillac Mountain. So um, that's that will be really, really quite nice. Um, consider that tonight, and then in two weeks will be the next one. We'll begin our service lighting our candle. Beloved, we gather in the grace and love of God.
let's join together in our call to worship. Come to the water, all who thirst. Come, drink deeply from the river of life. Come to the water, all who are weary. Come, rest in the quiet pools of God's love. Come to the water, all who long for justice. Come, be renewed in God's ever-flowing stream. For God is among us, washing away the dust of our lives and pouring out the Spirit on all who thirst. Our hymn is Morning Has Broken. going to join together in our litany of invocation. I will exalt you, my God, and bless your name. I will bless and praise your name forever and ever. You are great, O God, and greatly to be praised. Generations will praise your doings and declare your mighty deeds. I will meditate on your marvelous works. You are just in your ways, O God and faithful in your doings. You are near to all who call on you, to all who call on you in truth. You care for those who love, love. live. You, you attend, attend their, their cry God. for help. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless your holy name. Hi everybody, it's Renee and I am down here in Stonington. I'm waiting for Onwin who is um, at the ice cream shop. She is finishing up her shift for the day. She makes lobster rolls and ice cream cones and she's been at it today since uh, 10 o'clock. So um, it's about eight o'clock now. So she's had a long day serving food to people. And across the way is uh, one of the main docks where the lobster boats come in and, and offload their lobster and gets shipped off the island uh, for people to enjoy around the country and um, around the world, although not as many people around the world these days are able to enjoy it. But um, 18 tractor trailers full of lobster a day go off this island um, to feed people. So anyway, I'm down here. The text this week, we're talking about um, Jesus feeding the 5,000, the miracle on the side of the Sea of Galilee. 
and um, as I think about that, you know, I always thought about the miracle of 5,000 people eating from a few loaves of bread and a few fish and um, thought that the multiplication was what was the, the real miracle. But the more I think about it now, it's how much I miss eating with people. I miss communal eating. I miss dinner parties and I miss going to a big restaurant with the hustle and the bustle. I miss going to a cafe inside and eating and enjoying the company of others. Um, I miss even sitting down for dinner with my own family because right now we're just, we're too busy. You know, Anwen's working at night, Hallie's off for the evening. Um, so we rarely actually sit down. We kind of eat on the fly. And as I think about how 5,000 people gathered, and that was pro probably only the men, by the way. And so, you know, it could have easily been 10,000, 15,000 people. Maybe part of the miracle was simply the act that people ate together. That the miracle really is people being together and in harmony eating the bread and the fish together. And that's what Jesus does, is he calls us together and he feeds us. And he says, you know, sit here a while, rest. Here's some bread, here's some fish. Enjoy, be filled, and be satisfied. I think that's a pretty cool thing. Thank you, Lord, for feeding us and for calling us together. Amen. Have a great night, everyone. Great day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Renee. Continue with a time of prayer, and I'd invite you, as we do, I'd invite you to lift up prayer concerns that you might have by way of chat or text. We'll continue in prayer for those whom we have named in previous weeks, for Ada and Carl and Bob, and Jackie and Lonnie, for Lee and Anne, for Art and Sue and Terry and Rusty, for Royce, for Katie, for Gertrude, for Pat, for Jack, Dick, Sue, Michael, Judy, Hannah, Jeff, Chad, Eric, Eddie, Joan, Darlene, Billy, Levi, Sandy, Matt, Mike, Cheryl, Alva, Skyler, Carolyn, Nancy, Marty, Robin, Whitney, David, Kelly, Tucker and Joanna, Mary, Les, Tricia, Valerie, Rob. We seek God's consoling spirit for all who have suffered losses. We pray for those who work and live at Birch Bay and other long-term care settings, those in health care, essential workers, for businesses and caregivers and first responders, for families and students, teachers and administrators, for those who feel alone. We pray for peace, for guidance, protection, and health. We 
continue together in the spirit of prayer. God of relentless hope and eager blessing, your love floods the world with goodness and you shower creation with grace. Rekindle in us a hunger for food to satisfy body, heart, and soul, that in the miracle of being fed, we may share what you have entrusted to us. We thrive in grace and our hearts fill with gratitude. For all that nourishes us, the gifts of kindness and purpose, community and welcome, healing and peace, buoyant hope and redeeming compassion. We sing your praise. Pour out your spirit on all your beloved, O God. Fill us all with your compassion and love enough to overflow. God beyond all seeing and knowing. We meet you in the night of change and crisis and wrestle with you in the darkness of anxiety and fear. Give us the will and spirit to live faithfully and to love even as we are loved. This morning we pray for those who are physically hungry, especially those who face food insecurity food shortages, or anxiety about their next meal. We pray for those who are emotionally hungry, who long for companionship and love, who are caught in the grip of depression or anxiety or grief. We pray for those who are spiritually empty, who are troubled but don't know where to turn, who long for purpose and meaning but don't know where to look. We pray for all who ache in the pit of their stomachs due to worry or fear, illness or uncertainty, alienation or brokenness, prejudice or injustice. And we pray for our hungry nation, clamoring for integrity, vision, and truth to light a way forward in the enveloping fog of division and vulnerability creator and sustainer, bright beacon of joy. You offer us yourself to satisfy hunger and thirst. And so we look to you in our need, trusting in your faithful, loving kindness. Fill all who are empty. Pour out your spirit on all who hunger and thirst. Pour out your justice and righteousness that all may be lifted from discouragement and despair. Shine the light of renewed hope that we may all be your people of Shalom. Open our hearts to your spirit until your glory is revealed in relentless love, in communities transformed by justice and compassion, and in the making whole all that is torn asunder. We rest in your embrace, offering you the prayers of our hearts, whether in silence or out loud or by way of our chat. We pray for Debbie's mother, Mary, and Scott's father, Lee. We pray for Eric's family at the sudden uh, recent death of his sister. We pray for George. We pray for the friends and family of Steve as they grieve his loss.
To your love, O God, we entrust all for whom we pray. And our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, together we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing our response. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the water. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good and delight yourself in the rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Here ends the first lesson. The Gospel reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces Twelve baskets full, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving and extravagant and generous grace. Pour out once again your spirit upon your people, that we who are hungry and thirsty might be satisfied, and that our hearts and spirits would so overflow 
that our hands, our hearts extend to others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At times when crowds overwhelmed open table community suffers in the last few years, when the numbers swelled past 200 and the line was still stretching up the stairway, if there was that late rush at 6.30 of frantic families dragging hungry kids, they break out the emergency nachos. It's not five loaves and two fish, but it'll do. And people ate their fill. Of course, these days, open table, it's takeout and delivery. Most every week, they're feeding over 300 people. And even after these past few years, it still feels miraculous. Today's story of the feeding of the multitudes appears six times in the four Gospels, often enough to catch our attention if we miss it the first time around. Normally, we're captivated by the sheer impossibility of it. There's so little food, so many hungry people, and so much left over. That kind of like a hypnotically dangling, swaying, shiny coin, we miss other parts of the story. Today, I'd like for us to consider that the miracle in the story isn't just the question of how the crowds were fed or as Renee said, that the crowds were gathered to eat. But who fed them? And what that means for us today. The scripture today starts with a veiled reference. It says, when, now when Jesus heard this, what that's referring to is he'd received news that John the Baptist had been killed. And when he heard this, he wanted some alone time to grieve and to pray. So went out on the water all by himself in a boat. But the crowds followed him. Maybe out of compassion for him, they ached when he ached. Or maybe curiosity, like what does he do when he grieves? Or maybe because their need was overwhelming. And they knew that what he had would help them. And when Jesus saw the crowds, he was moved to compassion and he offered them healing all day long. Come evening, the disciples, maybe they were feeling protective of Jesus or annoyed by the crowds kind of pressing in upon him. The disciples implored him, let them go away to fend for themselves. And Jesus replied, they don't need to go. You feed them. And the disciples, who are always perplexed, said, but we only have five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them to me. And Jesus blessed what they had. And he broke the bread. And he gave the food to the disciples. And the disciples gave it to the crowds. And they ate their fill. At first, we might notice the tension between two different value systems. One, the one represented by the disciples, fearful of scarcity, annoyed by the clamoring crowds, insistent that they take care of, they, of themselves. And on the other hand, Jesus, operating from a framework of abundance, compassion, and grace. At this moment, it's possible that, like many of us, have found in our own lives that Jesus felt the acts of service could help heal his broken and grieving heart, help him feel grounded again. Maybe that's why he decides to tend to the needs of the crowds. But I also think he is offering a larger object lesson for the disciples as well as for us, reminding us that we can't kick the can of compassion down the road for others to take up or into the next day. And reminding us that fear or perceptions of scarcity or even annoyance at others' neediness do not exempt us from the call to serve. Jesus is saying, yes, this is ours. 
because we're fashioning a beloved community. Various versions of the Bible refer to this section as Jesus feeds the multitudes. But as you've already heard, he doesn't. The disciples do. It's as if he's saying, your turn. I highlight this for two reasons. One, because maybe this is where Jesus finds his limit. He's tapped out. He's spent all day doing what they needed. And come supper time, he's done. He needs to delegate. He needs backup. This is a little bit of a reminder that no one can do everything on their own, no matter how messianic they are. But I suppose that it's this and more as well. Jesus is showing the disciples that transformation he brings is their responsibility, our responsibility, not just his. That his blessing empowers us, even us, to move us all from scarcity to plenty, to bring about the miracles of community and joy and satiation. The story is at least as much about the disciples as it is about Jesus. So let me emphasize that the disciples were sent out together, not as a heroic individual effort, but corporately as one body, all cylinders humming together, a team effort. What Jesus is calling us to and the way we're getting there isn't a solo climb. When he says it's your turn, the you is plural. And a stunning piece of sacred self-awareness. This week we received a message similar to this one from John Lewis on the day of his funeral. As death had at last rendered him unable to carry his torch of redeeming truth, nonviolence, and beloved community, he reminds us, it's your turn. And I'm going to read a bit from what he wrote. He wrote, while my time here has now come to an end, I want you to know that in the last days and hours of my life, you inspired me. You filled me with hope about the next chapter of the great American story when you used your power to make a difference in our society. Millions of people motivated simply by human compassion laid down the burdens of division. Around the country and the world, you set aside race, class, age, language, and nationality to demand respect for human dignity. This is why I had to visit Black Lives Matter Plaza in Washington, though I was admitted to the hospital the following day. I just had to see and feel it for myself that after many years of silent witness, the truth is still marching on. I once heard the voice of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. saying that each of us has a moral obligation to stand up, speak up, and speak out. When you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act. And each generation must do, must do its part to, keep, to help build what we call the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself. Though I may not be here with you, I urge you to answer the highest calling of your heart and stand up for what you truly believe. In my life, I have done all that I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence is the more excellent way. Now it is your turn to let freedom ring. When historians pick up their pens to write the story of the 21st century, let them say that it was your generation who laid down the heavy burdens of hate at last, and that peace finally triumphed over violence, aggression, and war. So I say to you, walk with the wind, brothers and sisters, and let the spirit of peace and the power of everlasting love be your guide. Surrounded by hungry crowds, Jesus blessed their meager scraps and broke the bread 
and gave it to his disciples. And the disciples gave it away. And all were eight. All ate and were filled. And now, beloved, it's our turn. Amen. This song is called, He Has Provided. Thank you so much. As we come to our time of sharing communion, we acknowledge how difficult it is to live as God intends. Together, let us pray. Most holy God, 
we confess that we are rarely just in all our ways and far from being kind in all our doings. Who we want to be and who we are are two different things. Our lives are a mishmash of brilliance and thick-headedness, of moral strength and cowardice, of kindness and meanness, of openness and cunning, of sincere love and conniving self-interest. We need your justice and your mercy to forgive and cleanse us and to redeem us from all that would frighten or worry us. We need your loving kindness to wipe away our shame and regret. We need your light to help us find our bearings and your friendship to delight us in our joy and to comfort us in our sorrows. Grant to us, eager loving God, the grace of a new beginning and the expectant joy of an expanded love. Give us a passion for your extravagant ways. Through Jesus Christ, our companion and redeemer. Amen. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and has compassion over all creation. The Lord is faithful in word and gracious in deed. The Lord upholds all who are failing and raises up all who are bowed down. By God's grace, we are freed to give and receive forgiveness. And so let us share a sign of God's peace, however we can, with whomever we can. Peace to one and all. Peace, Christy. Peace. 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 Oh, yeah. Peace. Our service will continue with our Sursum Corda. May God be with you all, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. When they were at supper, Jesus and his disciples gathered together in an upper room sharing a meal. Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, he took the cup and he blessed it also and he gave it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you do this, remember me. Let us pray. God of new life, send your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and cup that they may become for us heaven's food and drink, healing and forgiving, making us whole, and that we may become your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome to this feast of grace. I invite you to take something to eat and share it if you're with someone. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
and taking the cup, the cup of Christ for our reconciliation. Let us pray. Bountiful God, we give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table with the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Thank you. Refreshed by the living water of Christ, we go from this service of worship to the service of God's people. So let us listen for the parched voices of the least of these. Let us search out dry places and arid souls. And let us become string, springs of living water. As we go, may the blessings of the God of life, the Christ of love, and the Spirit of grace remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine.
Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Hi, everybody. I think, first of all, I want to thank everybody for, um, I think I'm on. I want to thank everybody who is a part of today's service, whether you um, shared in the, the running of the worship itself or you were here. Thank you so much for gathering us together, even though we are, we are physically separate. Um, I wanted to note one thing that um, Steve Grubb is actually doing this from Pennsylvania. So, you know, the miracles of technology allow us to be connected even when we're super far apart. So now that everybody's taken the moment to um, unmute, or many of you have, um, we can say hi to one another, you know, hi to Gary and Sharon and, and Hilda and Jan and Byrne, Ann and Doug and Scott, and Linda, Wendy, Renee, Ken, and Hello. Sue and Kathy.